Hey everybody. So I have some uh, uh, some more interesting clues, and that I think tie this all together as far as the Orion Nebula and its uh, location and its meaning. So what I want to do is I want to play you a quick clip from this Cosmic Christ video that I created. It's got Manly Hall in it, and then we will uh, take a look at some of the data. Listen to what he has to say because some of it's going to be repeated. He did not know how to weigh the arguments of one venerated teacher against the arguments of another who had arrived at a different conclusion. He therefore, as an individual, came to realize that there had to be some other way of knowing. There had to be a direct knowing. If there was not, there could be no end of uncertainty. Listen to what he says right here. There descended a great light or vitality from circumference of a great sphere to its center. In the center it formed uh, the great eye, the eye of Kepha, uh, the eye which is the eye of Israel, or the eye of the God of Israel, which neither slumbers nor sleeps, uh, the, uh, the great open eye that has no lid. Okay. Now, let's take a look inside this. Uh, this is actually from the Zohar. This is the Book of Concealed Mysteries. He's speaking of the Eye of Kether. Uh, above the eye is no lid. He said the great eye that has no lid. And there's not an eyebrow above it. Uh, there are some other things in here. He called it the, uh, the great eye, the eye of Israel, the eye of Kether. Now, Kether you will not find in here. But it's the same one because he's speaking of the eye that has no lid, which is the same place. Um, and he calls it the Ancient of the Ancient Ones. Now, and this is of course in Kabbalah. Okay, so let's take a look at something real quick. So I noticed down here, because this is the eye of Kether that we're talking about. It says this in 139. And this is the tradition. There is no light in the inferior eye so that it may be bathed in the redness and blackness except when beheld by that of the white brilliance of the superior eye which is also called the bountiful eye so I noticed something very interesting there because we have three colors we have red we have black and we have white and then of course I found this At Dashur, we have the Red Pyramid and the Black Pyramid. The Bent Pyramid is covered in white Tura limestone. So we have red, white, and black. Maybe this is a clue to the Giza pyramids also having distinct colors in the past. It would seem that the Great Pyramid would have been shimmering white with its casing stones. The Second Pyramid still glimmers red. And the third pyramid has the remnants of black stones. Okay, so we have three pyramids corresponding to white, red, and black, just like we see here with stress or with importance given to the white one. The white one is the same as the large pyramid that we see, which is the Pyramid of Khufu. The one with the capstone that's missing, that would be the white one. It would have been encased in limestone and it's associated to the superior eye called uh, the bountiful eye. Okay, so we have our clues now there. Remember, we have the exact same, same three colors. Uh, we have the eye of Kether. Now, Kether is also imp important because Kether ties us to the nebula, as we will see. This is from The Ladder of Lights by William, Gre uh, William G. Gray, and this is uh, 1975 That's when it was published. I do a search for nebula. We see that Kether is tied to the nebula. So we have the great eye of Kether. We see that it's tied to the nebula. We see the black, white, and red. Same color of the pyramids, where the white one corresponds to the one missing the capstone. So we now have that tied to the nebula there as well. On top of that, we have the mention of the that thou tetragrammaton art seen eye to eye. 
And so in the tetragrammatron, we have the following evidence. We see that this place right here, the eye, the eye of Kether, is tied to the nebula once again, and we have the tetragrammaton right here in the middle. Tetragrammaton referring to the bright spot in the middle. In addition to that, Kether tied to the nebula, we have uh, Michelangelo's painting of the creation of Adam showing the same thing. We also have a, ver a version where it is zoomed in showing the same thing with God's head right here. And in addition, we have this right here showing that the nebula is actually on the earth as well. Its imprinting uh, is actually on the earth as well. And this ties us to the sayings of Hermes Trismegistus that Egypt is the image of heaven. And we can also see in the Ladder of Lights we see this. We must remember that Kether is at the top of the Tree of Life, and a treetop has a number of uh, unique attributes. It is the point which the tree appears out of nothing, so to speak. Though, in fact, it emerges from itself, which is metaphysically the same thing. If we bother to look down on the tiniest sapling, sending out its confident leaves from its own invisible heart, it may teach us something about Kether. The imprint of Kether, Kether or Heaven, is often discernible on earth, which is exactly what Hermes Trismegistus told us, and he pointed us to Egypt, and we see that the same thing regarding Kether and the nebula, and the eye of Kether is also pointing to the nebula. And then we have the missing capstone, the missing capstone representing that area where uh, moving up the pyramid where the visible universe moves into the invisible universe. And you can pull out a protractor and test this yourself, but the trapezium of the nebula uh, it has the same slopes as the slopes of the Great Pyramid, which is the 51.8 degrees. And from Isis Unveiled, we see that the peculiar architecture of the pyramids shows in itself the drift of the metaphysical thought of the builders. The apex, which is the very top of the pyramid, is lost in the clear blue sky of the land of the pharaohs and typifies the primordial point, primordial point being that point where everything came into existence lost in the unseen universe from which started the spiritual prototypes of man. Right here are three lines showing, once again, the trapezium, and you can pull out a protractor yourself and test it. It has the same slopes as the pyramid. This, my friends, is what they were pointing us to. And what we see right here, with the black, white, and red tying us to the pyramids and the color of the pyramids, where the white is the most important, corresponding to the superior eye, which is the Eye of Providence that is located in the middle of the nebula. Same colors, same level of importance uh, stressed on the white, same, all of these things. Basically, if I were in a fair court of law, uh, the other side would be pleading guilty and asking for uh, uh, some kind of a, a reduced sentence at this point. You guys, take care. I'll talk to you soon.